What's happening, everybody? What's happening? Let's see. As you can see, we're getting a little of our blue and green paint all over the canvas, at least in the black section. And that way we can have some misty, foggy action, our little waterfall happening down here. It's going to be wicked cool. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Ta you know what? Tag your favorite sandwich place inside the comments. Be like Jimmy John's, Subway, Porta Subs, Firehouse, wherever you're at. Tag your favorite sandwich place. What's your favorite sandwich? We're going to see if we can't get that to take off. That'd be kind of fun. So all I'm doing is putting a little of our, we had our, uh, our black gesso initially, right? Let that thing dry. Then we put our liquid clear on. And then while the liquid clear was wet, we put all these little blue and green colors on. And anywhere that the blue and green are, when we hit it with white, it's going to interact. So let's wash this brush off and we'll get started. Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And tag your favorite sandwich place so they know we're talking about them over here, man. Let's see. I'm going to mix up and kind of spin it out in here. Kind of retaining all of that liquid mineral spirits in there. It's very runny. Very runny stuff. Shake it off until I can. And then into the beater bucket. Beat the devil out of it. Comes nice and clean. Look at that. It needs a, it's a, it needs a haircut. But besides that, it's nice and clean, right? All right, let's see, guys. We're going to do this gorgeous little sunset scene. It's going to be fantastic. Just fantastic. Now, I like going with a one-inch brush. When we don't have a whole lot of sky to work with, we can use a one-inch brush to kind of fill up our spaces, right? This is the Bob Ross one-inch landscape brush, just like that, right? If you ever wanted to screenshot it and save it for later, that's the brush that you want to go get. You can find them in my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. This guy's a little hard. <laughs> he hasn't been used in a while. Got to bash him a little bit. There we go. Nice and soft. So if you want to go over to amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh, you'll find all sorts of diff excuse me, of different uh, art supplies and different things that we like to use that you could get easily. All right, I'm going to take our yellow. going to go all the way down there. And it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter because it's mixing with what, guys? All right, if we put our liquid clear in our dark section and then put that blue paint on, what do we put in the white section? That liquid white paint. That liquid white helps everything slide all over the place, right? Now, without washing the brush, going to go into a little bit, our next darker color, a little of our yellow ochre. If we can get some, get out of there. There's a bunch of skin on There we go. There we go. Get that skin up out of here. I don't want that in my painting. Don't want that. Let's see. There we go. Now, we're going to come in with that bit darker of a color, right? Our yellow ochre. It's a bit like a golden yellow. A bit of our red. And who knows? Just put it anywhere, right? If you cover over some of your trees, that's okay. We can bring them back to life later. They don't have to be perfect right now. A bit more of our red, maybe dump it in up here. It doesn't really matter where it is. I'm telling you. And if I'm telling you it doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter, right? You can put a little bit over here. You can put a little bit over there. Just sort of piece it out in your mind. Where would you think your little sunset would show some color, right? I love using all these gorgeous colors. So a bit into our crimson now. The crimson is a much deeper, darker red than the red that we have there. We want to put it in between our yellows or our orange section, in between that and the blue, right? Because if we're going to add a bit of blue onto the brush towards the end, a bit of blue, a bit of black even, pull that out like this, get this gorgeous little deep, dark, sunsetty, stormy color over here. Very cool. Now you can see we're not even coloring in everywhere, right? It looks like a little four-year-old sunset, but I promise it's going to get better. Just give me a few seconds. Trust in the process and it will get better, I promise. I'm going to come back in a little bit more of the crimson and a little bit more of the black for this guy up here. There we go. The crimson and black versus the blue and crimson and black is a different color. So we're not going to have all the same colors every which way. Got to finish the corners. I always try to finish my canvases and that way my buyers don't have to go get a frame, even though this one comes with a free frame upgrade, guys. Free frame upgrade. You must be crazy, Josh. That's right. If you buy this one during the show, during the live show, you get this one over in my Etsy shop. It comes with a free frame upgrade. I've got three frames, two of which I have here. One of them I have down at, uh, at a different place, but I can go get it easily. But I'm, a, I'm imagining the black frame is going to be the best. So I've got two black frames here. And if you purchase this one during the show, you get a free frame upgrade, which means that the canvas is one price and the frame is usually another. They're all the same price right now. So Head over there, check it out, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. That's the last thing we're going to say about it. Now we're going to come in with a little two-inch brush, right? Two inches is big, ladies, right? If you think about doing your makeup with this big old sucker, that's a big brush. <laughs> I had fans say that in one of the uh, 
one of the comments one time was like, hey, finally someone said two inches was big. And that just made me laugh so hard that now I say it all the time. There we go. All we're doing is mixing in our little bit, right? Staying into our lightest area first, making sure it's nice and blended, crisscrossing it back and forth. It's a little yellow onto the brush. All right, and maybe we work a little bit of that red back towards that yellow. Maybe we'll save like a little area. Depends on what it looks like, right? Y'all have all that paint up there. It's going to want to grow down and cover all of our light section, which may end up, it may end up changing our whole color of our sky from an orange to a, uh, from a yellow to an orange, right? All depends, but it's never a mistake. Yours is going to be a little bit different than mine. It's going to be a little different than Jonathan Everly's or Paint with Brands or Paint with J Studios or Cloud Zaddy or anybody else. It's going to be a little bit different. Everything's going to be different, all right? Bing, bang, boom. Just like that. Fantastic, guys. The more you mix it, the more it starts to mix. Imagine that. So, as we come out here, grab up some of our darker color, and we start to pull it down. We always talk about the three P's of paint with Josh, right? I'm going to try to leave a little yellow section right back in there, and then everything else doesn't matter. We're going to come crisscross it over the whole thing, trying not to get anywhere near this area because it's all covered in blue, right? You want to have that blue mixed with our yellow up into our sky. That's going to be bad. Very lightly, just to take away any of those little straight lines or brush strokes, very softly, right? Still remains light, even though it's taken some of the color and pulled it across. Now, we get to decide how far we want the colors to grow outwards, just based on our three P's of paint with Josh, right? We have our paint on the canvas. That's our first P. We have our second P, which is what? I'll give you guys a follow right now. If you want to, if you think you know what that second P is, We'll see if we can get some people to follow you. Let's see. Just a second, P. Pressure says K dot. We're going to pin that. Oh, I can't pin the comment. Won't let me pin it. Tinker, that's the next one. Won't let me pin that comment either. How come I can't pin comments? Uh, won't let me pin it. This is so bad. There we go. At least we got one. Looks like EVL or evil. They know. Pressure. Right? Along with everybody else. Everybody else knows. And I'm sorry. I won't let me pin those other earlier comments. But... We can't spend the whole time. Siri, we don't care. <laughs> can't spend the whole time behind the camera looking at the comment section, right? Now, with our pressure, like we were all just saying, with our pressure, we get to decide how far we can stretch this blue, how much it's going to grow down into our scene, right? Just depends on how far we push it with that brush. Come up here and we start to mix in. This is why you want that crimson layer in between your bit of blue and your bit of yellow, because the blue really wants to come down and it'll start to turn your sky green which may look pretty cool, just not in this scene. I just don't want a green sky for this scene, right? Now, the more you come out and the more you mix it, pull it backwards and forwards, the more it's gonna stretch the paint and move everything and blend everything so you could just go like this across the whole freaking thing and not even move anything because it's so blended that you don't even have to worry about it, right? You don't have any big thick chunks up there that are gonna streak across and be all nasty. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So, wash the brush, dry it off. We got a really cool looking sunset sky out there. It's gonna be fantastic. I'm gonna take a little of my, uh, one of my little filbert brushes, just like this, and we're gonna pull down into that white paint, just getting it onto the one side. So, you know what, this filbert brush is, I don't know that he's gonna pr provide us the best shape. He's kind of been beaten to death. Let's get a new one. Let's get a new one out. So I'll show you the ones that we like to use. And we've had these sent to us by many fans. Many, many, many fans send us these. And I love every single pack of these that we get. Right? Look at how small these little filbert brushes are. Teeny tiny, right? So you want to make a really small little sun out there. And these are called the, I don't even know how to say it, Bomahia or Bomaihia? Some, some way, somewhere. Search for that name. And they're like a pack. They're like 10 bucks for a pack of 10. They're awesome. So you can get those over in my Amazon store if you want to go look. And that's uh, amazon.com slash shop slash paint with Josh. And you go over there and anything that you get over there, I earn a small commission off of. So head over there and check it out. So we're going to load up the brush, a little bit of white, right onto the brand new little filbert brush. Only on the one side, though. You don't need to have it on both sides, right? Don't need to have it on both, just the one side. Let's go find our brightest area, which looks like it's right in the middle of that tree trunk, which should be kind of cool. Uh, well, let's stick it off to the side, right in between because we get a little teeny tiny one. Now we pushed against the canvas, very flat. We're gonna rotate the brush all the way around, making these very small little circle because we got a little teeny tiny brush way out there, right? Super bright little sun against all that color. If you got your pure white on the brush, 
and just like that, got a very neat little sky. So, anywhere that you have these color variations, that's where you can throw in your clouds and stuff, and it looks fantastic. And the, the fun little way to do it is by grabbing a fan brush, and that way you can really just mush that whole fan brush all over the sky and get all these crazy little designs. So we'll come into here, all right? Load it up like this on both sides. And let's just say out into here, and remember, we can always bring our trees back into the foreground or leave them so far away and faded like that that they look at a, a very far distance, right? So we bring in our brush, just like that. Start spinning the brush, mushing it, trying to get all the white across there on the thing. And again, we can always bring the trees forward. The trees are only there to really save this bit against the background. And I'll show you by the time we get to the end. Now, a very small amount of pressure, because we just put our, our first P of paint with Josh, the paint, up onto the canvas. And then we're using our pressure, our second P. Does anybody know the third P? What's the third P of paint with Josh? Because you need a lot of that third P if you want to do anything. If you want to ride a horse, if you want to ride a bicycle or a motorcycle, you need a lot of that third P. Does anybody know it? Let's see what we got. Let's see. Carlos Viagra. Viagra. I always mess that up. V, no, v oh my God, I can't even say it. Variaga, it's gotta be Variaga, that's very cool. They know, and I'm sorry, it might not have been the first one, but it's the first one I saw, so we're gonna pin Carlos's comment as practice, right? Carlos knows, practice, along with everybody else. Everybody knows the three P's of paint with Josh, and if you don't know the three P's of paint with Josh, what the heck are you doing? What are you doing right now? How come you don't know? Is this the very first time you're watching a paint with Josh show? Because then you get a pass. If it's your very first time, then you get a pass. And take that brush, just like that, all nastily filled with paint. Come up into here. A lot of paint, a lot of pressure, a lot of distance in between the clouds. So you can go from very bright down to no brightness, right? Just our sky color. And then poof, a little bit of bright again. And then we'll blend that one back. All about layering and blending, right, ladies? It's just like our makeup. I mean, I don't wear makeup. You can tell by this. I should probably should. I probably should wear makeup, but I don't. So. Take this like that, we're gonna blend it. Just like the makeup, we're gonna blend it back and blend it back. And the more we blend these clouds, the more they're gonna mix in with the sky color behind it, right? So we decide based off of our eyeballs and we look at it and we go, okay, that looks good. Stop, we'll take the brush away, right? Stop, you can, you can still do your circles. Just take the brush so, so far away that you're not touching the canvas anymore. Just like that. Now, that's gonna look really cool. If, uh, anytime I normally do a, a sky that I just absolutely love. I gotta throw a little contrail off in the distance to remember Karen, uh, Karen, which is London's mom, is taken from us too soon. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my white, just a teeny tiny little dab, and come out here like this and just put a small little bit, just like that. And again, we all know with the amount of paint that we put up onto the canvas, our next step is pressure, right? How far that thing's gonna grow with our pressure. So you don't need to put up a whole giant long line of paint because we know that when we touch it with this brush, it's gonna blend and move, right? So take the brush like that, two swipes to the left, one long swipe to the right. Who keeps trying to join my live? Who is this Gabby? Now I gotta turn off invites for this whole live, thank you. It keeps bugging me, I keep seeing it on my screen. I'm like, oh, I can't see my painting. Now, just like that, we're gonna take it, two swipes to the left, one long swipe to the right. So one, two. A right? little bit, just to help it blend into that cloud. One long swipe that way until you stop seeing the color move. And poof, you got a cool little contrail off in the distance, right? You can always come into your cloud area and just mix it up just a little as bit just to get rid of the line. And it looks like thing popped right out from behind the cloud. Pretty cool. Pretty cool if you ask me. Now, in any case, they're very soft little white clouds out there. I love them. I'm going to make them a little bit brighter. I'm going to add a little bit more paint. We're gonna go a little bit less pressure, and that's gonna allow the paint not to blend in with the red and the pink and the orange so much and remain a little bit brighter, right? As we come out here, maybe we could turn that, that two clouds into one cloud. Who knows, we could do all sorts of stuff. I love playing with the clouds, especially when we don't have much of a space, you know what I mean? I can show you, you can do lots of stuff, with just a little bit of know-how and placement, right? A little bit of pressure pushes that cloud way off in the distance. Maybe it's a little UFO out there. Maybe it's the top of a UFO out there coming in to come see what's going on over here, right? Now, maybe let's grab a little bit more of the paint, connect it along to this little cloud, go up and around the edge. There we go. A little bit more brightness, almost like there's a wrapping around, you get that little eyeball sort of deal in the clouds. Or a bit more white, 
just so it stands out away from that color. Because as we all know, as we start to mix it, it's going to blend down. As it blends down, it's going to start to change color with all those different colors that we have on the canvas up there. Just like that. <laughs> Looks like wings. It's like, ha -ha! <laughs> this giant dragon with the head of the sun. I don't know, something like that. Something crazy like that, right? Maybe it'll play into however we name this painting. Remember, this painting, you get to name it. So, especially if you buy it, right? You get, to, you get to put forth your name suggestions towards the end of the show, adding a little bit of white onto the brush, mixing it on just like that, a little bit brighter, a little bit softer. As we mix it down and mix it down into that darkness, dragging some of the paint down into there, down everywhere. Just like that, very cool. Uh, but like I was saying, towards the end of the stream, we get to start naming the painting. And then if you're the one that buys the painting, you get to choose the name. You get to pick the name of the painting. I think I'm the only artist that lets you choose the name of their artwork if you buy it. So also, if you purchase this one during the show, you get a free black frame upgrade or any of the frames. I have the black one. It's probably going to look the best with this. But any of the frames that I have for this painting, you can get for free as an upgrade if you buy it during the live show. Wash off all these brushes. They come out nice and clean. Boom. Now, now that we got our clouds, we got our deals, we can start deciding what do we want these little bits of trees to look like back there. Now, I want to bring the trees back, bring them forward, but I don't want them to be so super bright. So we're going to add a little bit of white to our brush and go into that little bit of our dark kind of black area, make a little of this darker gray color, right? Got to have enough paint on the brush for it to kind of chisel the bristles down. We don't want it to be too dark, so let's start with a little bit brighter than we need. We'll come in here and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, see how it's that little kind of grayish color? And that gray color is gonna help it look more further in the distance as we get closer and we start using much darker colors. Now, go back to that little gray section. Maybe this guy up here that was lost in the clouds. Make sure you got enough little paint so it's nice and sharp on the brush, otherwise you can't cut through this cloud. The more we go down, the further we push, Poof, right? Bringing those things forward, dragging them back, get all sorts of distance and depth. Maybe we leave this one a little bit further back than those two. It looks a little further away already. Same with that guy over there, but maybe this guy on the front, maybe he's got a little bit of life to him. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna start tapping at this bit. All right, just smacking up, making little things, sort of filling in our little shape that we had before with our lighter gray color, tapping into the branches, tapping into the canvas, over there, filling it up, right? Now that tree looks closer than any of the other trees because it's a bit darker, it's a bit closer to us. Very cool, we can always go back and make him darker, make him lighter, add darker trees, bring more things forward, do this, do that, whatever you wanna do in your painting. That's why I love playing with this black gesso stuff. Because you can have things, you can, you can plan out your scene initially, <clears throat> like okay, we planned out the scene with those trees off in the distance, now what do you wanna see? Do you wanna see more trees? Should we leave this one nice and covered? So it's just a sky back there because you can't even tell there's a tree there anymore unless we bring it back to the foreground, right? All up to us what we do with our painting. Now, maybe this guy's a little silhouette. Maybe eventually we put some, some uh, highlight on him. All depends on what it looks like when we get there. That's what I always say. All depends. I like that. That's very cool. Okay, now we're going to wash off the lighter color off of that brush. and Let's start making some darker, more foregroundy trees. And then we'll come in with our water. We got our little bits everything. So let's actually do the waterfall right now. You guys want to see how to make a water, just make a waterfall. How about that? I'm going to come over here. Let's scrape up and clean up a good little section. So we got a nice clean area. We don't want that dark paint contaminating our waterfall, right? And it's a nice bright white paint that's going to go over this blue. You can already see the blue that I've laid down and then brushed out and made everywhere. So anytime that we hit it with some white, it's going to interact. It's going to start to brighten up. Right, so a very small amount of paint is going to just make it a very dark blue. A very lo a lot of white paint is going to make it brighter and brighter and brighter blue until it's not blue anymore, right? So we're going to take the white, just like that, on the edge of the brush, both sides, and come over to the side and down. So connecting right to the top right there, over to the side, fall right down. Look at that. Woo! Just a little, little stream, little babbling brook came running out, fell right down like that. Look at all those little diamonds in the sky, all from the amount of pressure as we were letting the brush slide down the canvas, very close to it, almost hitting our brush on it, right? Very close, and letting it slide down and taking whatever paint that it wants, pulling it right off, right? All up to us, what we want to get it to do. Now, all up to us, again, how far it falls down, right? All depends on what you want yours to look like. So maybe back here, you came down underneath, 
And as soon as we start going horizontally, it's gonna start to look like water. Look at this. Look at this, guys. Gets a little bit bigger as it comes towards us. Extending a little bit more, right? In our little water, our little, our little river as it's coming out towards us like that. Filling in little spaces, but leaving spaces as well, right? That little spot is not as bright as the area around it. Same as here. A little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. Doesn't all have to be the same. You don't want it to be the same, right? Now, maybe we still got a little bit of paint on this brush. Maybe our, our waterfall came over like this, fell down again into a different spot, into another little pool. Maybe there's a pool down here. Could be. If we just put the little teeniest, tiniest bit. Ooh, yeah. Just down there, there could be another little pool. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? Maybe our waterfall is a little bigger. It started to fall down like this. See how we're changing the angles? The first one was over and down. The next one was kind of diagonal. And then this one was more sort of straight onto it. All depends on what you want to make your water look like. And then we could take this guy back however we want, literally. Literally whatever we want to do. And we're going to take our brush and we're going to pull it, stretch it, do all sorts of stuff anyway. So it doesn't matter what it looks like initially. I'm going to come back with our one inch brush and start to stretch it, make it soft. Let's see how it gets darker as it starts interacting with all the darker paint on the outside. Just like that, guys. Just like that. All right, and we bring it down. Then we can figure out, okay, we're right here. And then we'll end up going over the side. Right? All depends on what we want to do. We go back and add little highlights, little low lights, little shadows, little things. Fantastic. Now, at least we've got our scene sort of planned out what we want it to look like. And we can go back in and fill in the rocks, do all the fun stuff, if you ask me. I think that's the fun part. So let's scrape up a bit of our dark color. How are we going to make this dark color, guys? What three colors do we use to make up this dark color? If you're a brand new follower, you better be paying attention to the comments right now. Because this is one of those questions that will get you pinned at the top. And we all know whoever gets pinned at the top gets followed because if you want to get pinned to the top and you want everybody to follow you, blue, crimson, and black says Tiffany. She's getting the follow from Paint With Josh. And if I can try to pin her comment right there. There we go. Everybody go follow Tiffany. Like I said, one day it's going to be your turn. You're going to be the one that's pinned up there and you're going to want everybody to go follow you. So make sure you go follow them. That's how it works. All right, we're going to take our dark mix, that crimson, black and blue, or black, crimson, and blue, or blue, crimson, and black, however you want to mix them up, right? They're all the same. They make this really dark, purpley mixture of a color, all right? And what we're going to do with that color is we're going to scrape it up and get a whole chunk of it like this, and then we're going to come out and decide. Maybe we can cross over a bit of our little tree there. We're just going to start dumping it on. And we have our little bit of rock standing out right out there. Very cool. See, that's very flat along the back. We're not really doing too much as far as detail way out there, not trying to touch my waterfall, trying to bring it around, mushing the paint down so you get that darker color. You should be able to see it with as much light as we have in here. You should be able to see that darkness, right? And I'll come up in here, kind of cover over the base of that guy. Maybe we had a little bit up there. All depends, just gonna mush some more paint. And that way, when we come across it with our highlights, it's gonna change and pick up in all different areas, right? Now, we don't want it to just be textured like that. So we wanna take our brush and just pull it down in different ways. However you think your rock's gonna come down, right? Maybe that guy was going down this way. It's never all the same. It's a, a big jumbled up pile of rocks. And how's it gonna all be going the same direction, right? Never pull them all the same direction, just like that. Now, I understand, it's very dark, and very hard to see. And this is where the fun part comes in, where we get to highlight it. So let's take our brown color, right? Our, uh, this is the dark sienna brown, or like a, like a burnt sienna color. Uh, and then you got like your dark umber, your raw umber. We got a light brown and a dark brown, right? So we'll take our lighter brown, a bit of our darker brown, and a bit of our yellow ochre. And it makes this awesome, like sandstone-y type of color. Very cool, like dirt kind of color. This reminds me of like our cabin out in Utah where we have all these, you know, all these little places where you can go drive out on the quad and just explore. And it's got all this colored dirt out here. It's very cool. So I'll scrape up a little of our brown. Now remember, anywhere that we touch this brown, it's going to drop off of our knife and stick to that darker color that's down in there, right? So we want to be very light with our touch and pull it quickly, right? Sometimes I've found that if you go fast, right? If you're trying to go slow and you're trying to make it the most perfect little mountainous rock you ever done did see, it's not going to be the most perfect thing you ever saw because you're, you're trying too hard. You're going too slow. You're pushing too hard on the knife, right? Pressure is a very, very, very big part of the palette knife. 
probably the most important part of the palette knife. Doesn't matter how much paint you load onto this, all about our pressure. You could have a giant amount of paint, but if you got that right amount of pressure, still work out good, right? Or you can have a teeny tiny amount of paint and with that right pressure, have that paint stretch a long way or just be right where you want it to be, right? All depends, which always brings us to our third P, uh, P of paint with Josh, which is what, guys? What's that third P? Everybody knows you're gonna get a pinned comment right here for the third P and everybody's gonna go follow you. Thank you, Airy Fairy Faye, for uh, pinning that the, this one's available for sale, number 878, you're awesome. Adam says practice, the first person I saw, where's it at? Pin Adam's comment, ba-boom. Everybody go follow Adam now, because one day you're gonna be in Adam's place and your comment's gonna be pinned right there, right? They're gonna be like, man, I wish I would have followed everybody so they could follow me now. Come on, don't play like that. Get over there and follow Adam. One day you're gonna be in his spot. You're gonna be wishing that everybody would follow you. So don't be mean, go follow everybody, right? That's how it works around paying with Josh. Now, can't just get overzealous, right? Like Bust a Move says, can't just get overzealous and come over here and start dropping on our highlights without having any dark color underneath, right? That's not gonna work. It's not gonna be good. There we go. It's not gonna be as depthful or, you know, you won't have as many deep, dark shadows and stuff. So go back to your dark paint, come over and decide what these little rocks are gonna look like. Right, maybe it comes down there. And in this case, you have to sort of cover, uh, cover over a bit of where your water comes out, which is why I left that area in the corner a little bit dark. And that way it looks like our water is cutting its way. Like, excuse me, I'm trying to get through there and cut its way down through there. If you leave everything showing, then it's going to look like we're looking at the top of your water and the front of your water all at the same time, which doesn't work out. It's called perspective. Doesn't work out that way, right? Now let's take this little mountainous guy and maybe we pull him up over here a little bit higher. Maybe he's got a little ledge that comes out over there. All depends what you want it to do, how sharp you want it to be, right? How much you're trying to make a face in there. All depends. You guys don't see the face with the Elvis hair? You don't see it yet? There we go. I'm going to prop a little nose bridge. Maybe a couple little bits for the lips. Then we'll go highlight the rest. Very cool. Very cool. Do you see the face? Because I'm going to have a face right there. I love putting little faces into my rocks and stuff. And it's a very simple way. And all it is really is I figured out how to do it on accident, right? I didn't cover up too much. And one day I looked at it and I was like, ooh, that looks like a face. And everyone else was like, ooh, that looks like a face, right? So I started to figure out if you don't cover up too much of the darkness and save a lot of those shadows, you can sort of make it look like a face just a little bit. Maybe this guy's gonna have a long, long chin, like one of those long masks. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. All right, now we're gonna come in here with our same kind of highlight color. And let's start, if our brightest area is gonna hit over here, let's go on the bridge of his nose right here. I'm gonna touch a little bit, just dumping a little bit of the color off, right? That's all we need, a little bit. Maybe back in here, he's got a little cheek that got lit up down to his chin, some sort of something, right? And all of a sudden, you can almost start to see a little face in there, right? Up here, he's got the little dark spot for his eye. Maybe his forehead came up down. Maybe he's got an elongated skull with a horn on it. Who knows? Who knows what he's got? Can't look perfect face. It's a rock for goodness sake. There we go. Straighten it down. You see the face in there now? Anybody? Anybody see the face? A little bit of brown right out there on his lip. Get out there. I'm gonna get it off the back of the knife. There we go. Very cool. Dragging his little chinny chin chin all the way down. Kind of neat. Am I the only one that sees a face over there? Yes. Okay. Everyone else can see it. Okay. But you got to leave that dark area, right? You got to leave a disconnection in between the nose and the cheek. You got to leave a disconnection between the eye and everything else. It doesn't all have to be the same amount of high lit, right? And you can't cover all the dark. If you're going to put a little bit of um, like a highlight on top of that, you don't want to cover all of the dark area underneath it as well. So let's see. That's looking really cool, guys. Might look neat too if we try to do a double one. Do like a double face. Came up in like that, out there, a little bit, little things. And out another little bit like that. Come up and then we'll go off into the end. Off into the edge of the darkness. Put that tree way off in the distance, right? Now, we gotta fill in the spaces so it goes back to that dark area. Just like that. Very cool. Just pulling it back, making it a little bit softer so 
our next piece of highlight will stick on there, right? If it's all thick on thick on thick on thick, eventually it doesn't work. You've got to thin it down the smallest little bit. Smallest little bit. Remember, not everything has to be so bright and you want to leave a disconnection in between the little different things. Leave that disconnection, right? That little dark separator that we talk about when we're making seascapes all the time. All the time we're talking about the dark separator. Very lightly, pull that guy back. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? You want it to be less paint over here to the sides because that's where we're going to put our big old trees. So really only out there on the edge that we're really worried about it. Everything else right here is going to have a bunch of these big sticky trees right in the center of it. Very cool. Now, take a little bit more of our brown color and by changing the angle, right? We were all pulling this way. What if we pulled it this way? Watch what happens. Right? You get that little difference of rock. What if we started pulling down that way? It came down and went that way. It doesn't all have to go in the same direction. It's a big old jumbly pile. What if you want to pull it off the other way? That's okay, just don't do it too much because then it's gonna to drag too much color over, right? But you can literally do whatever you want. Just have some light, have some dark, sort of look, figure out, okay, my light's gonna come down, it's gonna hit on here and here and here and here. Maybe not down here, right? Because it's gonna be very hard for the light to reach all the way around, and get down there. So all depends on where you put yours and uh, you start making cool little things. Now, let's take our brush, come in here, go back to our water, dabbing up a little bit of our Titanium white, and we're going to go about about a half inch above the water and just dab in a little splash. All right, what are we trying to leave in between these two bits of bright color? What are we? What, what's that thing called? Because I just mentioned it, I just talked about it, just a, not even thirty seconds ago. I just said it. With our amount of pressure, we're going to start to pull that paint. Look at how far we can get that paint to drag. Woo! Work it up, not down. Work it up, up into your water. Not down, because what are we trying to save? Oh, there's that one thing. Hey, Kathy's custom art. What's happening? Dark separator by 0015796. Everybody go follow them. And uh, they know that dark separator, right? In between these spots, you got to have a little shadow. That's why we work up into the mist first, right? And then we start to bring it down and down and down. The more we come down, the smaller and smaller that little dark shadow is going to be back there. All right, it starts to come down, to come down, and leave that little bit way back there. Very cool. And I'm gonna put a small, small little bit of water just on my on my knife, right? A little bit of our titanium white. Drop a little bit of water out there. That's all. Just a little splashy. Got a little splashy. Pull that guy side to side. Boom! A little splashy action. I like him. I like him, right? A little, little bit of detail way out there, right? And the more you come towards us. The more little bits, the brighter they are. So the thicker amount of paint that we're dropping down, right? we're not going to connect all of them because if we connect them all, then they're all going to be the same color, right? A bit of sideways pull, just like that. Very straight sideways though. Sometimes I got to like come over here just to make sure it's sideways, uh, just to make sure I'm straight. There we go. Boom, a couple little details out there, little ripples, little things, right? Not a whole lot of detail. Now. We could make our guy over here a bit brighter as we're working our way down, right? So we already know are gonna come out like that, fall over, come down, fall over again, fall over again, into a little puddle if we want. We could have a little pool. We could have it fall down into mist. You know what I wanna do? I wanna have a little pool down here. So we're gonna decide where we wanna have our water, just varies horizontally. And start to pull it, just like we did before. All right, but this guy doesn't have to be so much paint, doesn't have to be so bright. And it's going to mix in with all the colors underneath as we start to spread it back and forth. Spread it back and forth. Just like that, right? Letting it work in, letting it blend, letting it mix. Not trying to make it all 100% the same, right? Now, this guy, since you have those big thick bits on the top, what you do is you take it and you slide them back. And that way it shows how the water is flowing and then falling over. We're going to put a big rock right here in the front, which will hide where our water is coming from, just like we did back here. I put that rock up where it was coming from. So you put another one kind of stuck in there like that to kind of cover over where our water is going to fall out from. It's going to be very cool. Very cool, guys. Now, do you want to bring your rocks and everything down? Do you want to have stuff hang over the edge? Do you want to have a little platform? You know, all little things that we got to decide what we want to do as they start getting closer to us, right? Very cool. You know what we can do even? Take the whole bit and even go a bit more off the edge 
All depends. What do you want to have yours look like? I always say it. Don't I always say that? What if we had another little waterfall? I love doing them off this side too. Boom. That way we can have a big old rock right here in the front. That'd be cool. Taking our little thing, sliding it back. Having a match up. Remember, nothing behind here matters anymore. We're going to have a big old space, a big old giant rock right there. So nothing behind there even matters. Just like Metallica says, nothing else matters. Boom. Over there, over there. Take these guys, slide it back. Just so we have that little bit of motion in the ocean, right? Come down over here. Actually, I'm not even going to mess with the bottom of that guy. We're going to take it like this. We're going to start to mush in all of our little bits of splash. Again, above, not into the water. Above it. Try to keep that little separator in there, right? And again, all depends on the amount of paint that we have. When we come in with our pressure on our brush, how far we can get that paint to move, right? So we can start to mix it. And it's mixing in with all the little colors. And based on the pressure, we can drag it up a bit. And it'll get a little bit softer. And then we come across the front. We start working it up into our into our waterfall versus down. Otherwise, we'll connect these colors. We'll lose our dark separator. And then the mission will be have failed. You have failed the mission. Just like that. Little bits of darkness underneath, right? You can even take your water. As long as you got that little bit of dark line under there, that's all you want. Take this guy over here. Start to come into this little bit of mix. Maybe they touch. Maybe they don't. Either way, there's going to be a rock right here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's happening right there. You just don't want to have too much paint up into our water versus down. So we save our little dark separator over there. You know, that mist, right? They don't have to fill it in with rocks or anything. It's just all implied. It's literally all implied that the rocks are there. Everything's holding it back. You get that little dark separator down around the bottom. And the fun part about these guys at the bottom is we take and we throw, we splatter paint onto it. So it looks like little water droplets. Very cool. Very, very cool. You can take this guy and soften him just a bit because he's a little further away, right? He's not gonna be as detailed as these little guys are if he's further away, in my opinion, anyway. That's just me, that's just me. You can do yours however you want, but in my opinion, that's, uh, that's how I'm gonna do mine, make it a little bit softer. Now, why don't we come in, we'll take a big old giant rock, right? And we'll, if we're gonna make a big old giant rock, we need a big old giant amount of our dark shadowy mixture, and who knows the three colors that we use for that dark shadowy mixture. Paint with Josh is all about threes, just like the universe. The universe of threes. All right, what's that dark shadowy mix that we use to make a giant rock or a tree shadow? Oh, Tinker was so close, but she misspelled it. Oh, no. Where'd the other one go? I missed it. Where did it go? Did you a Jeremy Belafonte forever wish you get a shout out for me? Thank you. I got you. Well, you got to answer a question correctly. Let's see. Danny said blue cream. Why can't I pin anything, guys? This is really starting to annoy me now. There we go. Pin Tinker, even though she misspelled blue. It's okay. I'll cut you a break. Cut you some slack. Just like that. All right. Now, we're going to mix up that blue, crimson, and black. All right? Everybody knows the three favorite colors we use to make up a deep, dark shadow and retain that same deep darkness back there. I'm going to scoop up a fair amount of that paint and come into here, and we have to go up into the water. Cover over some of those bits. Right? We've got to cover over something. Can't show everything. Cover over some of this guy over here. Make it all jaggedy and crazy. Right? Maybe we take our knife, come out to the side over there, right? just to have a little, little weird little piece off of it. But why does it got to be perfect, right? It doesn't, that's for sure. Take a few little scraggly bits. I love doing these little scraggly little monster, like Megatron style rocks. Just got all these crazy little action bits to them. It's just stand out, right? Just give it more depth behind the rock to the water, a little bit back and forth. And look at how we just, we literally pulled it down into nothing. And because we put our little mist in there, you don't even really have to do anything else. I wouldn't leave it like that, but you don't have to do anything else is the point. All right, we're going to pull it down very lightly so we don't extend the paint too far. Then we're going to come back in, same brush, mix up that little bit of mist. It's a little darker, a little bit more of the shadowy mist over here. There's still mist, but it's a different color. I wonder why Josh did that, guys. Oh, because the sun way back there, right? It wouldn't have the same amount of brightness. Oh, man. A lot of fun today. Okay, let's take a little bit of our brown color since we still have it. We don't have to make up any more. And we're going to take a bit, we're going to start to light up little sections of this, leaving a lot of dark area, right? We're way far away from the sun, all the way on the bottom, all 
the way at the bottom of the little canyon down here. So we're not going to see a whole bunch of light, in my opinion. Right? And so I don't put a whole bunch of highlights. I leave a whole lot of dark area, right? In the mixture of that, it's probably 70% dark, 30% highlights. It's really it. You don't need a whole lot, right? You don't want to cover up all the dark. Otherwise, you'll lose all of your depth, details, and distance, and everything. You lose it all. And that's no fun when you lose it all. You just lose it, man. You just lose it all. All right, we're gonna go back and make up our little dark color. Because what I wanna do is just put a teeny tiny few little bits of tree branches way back on those trees before we get too far ahead and forget that they're even back there. All right, so I'm gonna take a little of that lighter gray color, throw it out here, and crisscross over there, go up into here, make sure it's connected to my tree. There we go. Bouncing little things. Just wanna have a couple little bits out there. All right, two little bits off of these guys over here and there. That guy up like that. Maybe he's got one that comes out this way. One down over there, right? All depends on what you want yours to look like. So I always say, just like that. Now, wherever it's thick enough at the bottom, you can make your tree or your branch a little bit thicker as it connects to it. All right, and the darker the color, the more it's going to stand out. So very light-handedly on this guy, at least, we're going to throw a few little branches way off in the distance, way out there. And then the things that are going to be in front of them are really going to be what stands out. So we're going to have a lot of dark trees out here in front. They're going to take our attention away from all this guy, all those further away trees back there, these super faint trees back behind the rocks. These guys, they're all going to be taken away. All of our attention will be taken from them. All I'm going to do right here is just run my brush through where the, the little, um, where it touched onto the tree. Just to blend it down in the places where it's a little darker than the actual tree trunk. That's all. Like that, like that. Just mixing it with the teeniest, tiniest little brush that we have is all. <laughs> just like that. It's like trying to, it's like a, a, it's like a one millimeter brush instead of a one inch brush. One millimeter. All right, now the reason that we did that is because I wanted to get totally crazy nuts and bring in this gigantic tree that's gonna sit right down into the foreground and provide a lot of depth and distance. And in order to do that, we need to have branches on those trees back there. So let's say we came in from this guy. Ooh, we're gonna cut almost straight through the sun. See how it's nice and chiseled and sharp? And we come up here a little bit taller than those guys, very light pressure at the top. And then the further we come down, the more and more and more and more and more and more and more you push, more, 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 boom, comes down and lands into our little rock right down there like that. Gorgeous. All right, and take this little rock and extend it platform. Boom, wicked. Over there, a little bit more of our brown, just in different places. Doesn't have to be the brightest thing. Doesn't have to be the most highlight thing you ever saw. A couple little bits is all we need. Very cool. That big old tree's hanging on for dear life. Now, let's take that guy and what we're going to do, what we're going to do, you know what? Let's take here. This might look actually pretty neat if we do this. Continue off with our waterfall. Just off the edge, kind of going over to the side and down as it falls off. Get it back, a little of our white, right? Just little things, little disconnections. Maybe it fell all the way off the canvas over there. I got these little bits, little streaks, little things, right? And they come up and they go over the edge. Whoop. Little bits, just like that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous, guys. Boom. A little bit of white. A couple little highlights right over the front. Very cool. Now, let's throw some branches off of this guy. Come back over here. Remember, you can buy this painting if you go to paintwithjosh.com. You can find my Etsy store. It's the very first thing you see on paintwithjosh.com. So head over to paintwithjosh.com, check out my Etsy store. And then once you're in my Etsy store, look for number 878. Search the word TikTok or search for number 878. And that'll bring up this listing and you can purchase it right now. Now, these guys are going to have a lot more paint on the brush. They're going to be a lot darker. They're going to stand out. They need to have a lot more detail. They need to be darker than the other paint to stand out as in front, right? You don't want to have it be that same gray color 
as back here. Now these branches can get a bit bigger and go for a bit longer because we're on a much bigger tree that's closer towards us, right? Much closer to us. Take that guy. He's got one off to the side. A little branch. Branch, my man. I love pulling them out here too, where you get these little guys all through the mist. But you want to stay away from your thick areas of paint. You don't want to have too much. It's going to be difficult to cut your way through all that paint and then still have enough paint to make a branch by the time you come out here, right? You got to twist your brush as you're going through. You're kind of gouging a little section of the paint and that way, and then leaving like a little trench of that very dark color that'll help it stand out in front, especially if you can get it to creep around the edge. Very cool. Take this guy, we'll go off this way. Bouncing it just like a lightning bolt. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be the most perfect thing. A little thing over there. Maybe that guy's got a little streak up here. One little branch off there didn't go very far. Maybe that guy was going off that way, right? And then broke off. Not every branch survives its journey to branchhood. There we go. Very cool. I like that one, guys. Let's come up here and make a little sharp little, couple little details off that guy. Maybe one more, one more branch over there just to fill up some space. Very cool. Now, I'm going to put a big section of rock right in here with two, about two or three more of those guys. Right down in the side corner over here. It's going to be awesome. So keep that brush handy. Make sure you got a fair enough amount of your thick paint, right? Don't want to have that odorless mineral spirits mixing it up, making it too thin until you need to for your branches, right? Now we're going to come back to that same brown color, and it looks like we're finally... I mean, I think we got a bit. What is this? I think we got a bit, a bit of brown, but it might not be enough to do this whole tree. But we're going to try. So we're gonna come on to the left side since our sun is on the left side of the tree. We'll come in here, we're just gonna to touch and kind of tap, and pull away and just go up and up and up and up and up as many times as you can. Leaving a little bit of that branchy brown color right in between all the, that bit of dark tree trunk, right? And you wanna keep that brown separated from the brown over here. It's the same color, right? Even though it's the same color, if you keep a small amount of dark line on this side and a bigger dark line on that side, it's going to make the tree look round and even having the same color, it's going to make it look forward and push the rocks off in the distance, right? Now we're going to come up here and since this guy is big enough, we can put a little bit of brown all the way up to the tip top of that guy, just like that. Very cool. It doesn't have to be the most brightest thing, but whoever buys this one, you're going to be able to feel the tree trunk because there's literally a little lip. You know, when you go to touch it, and you push on it and then it pulls away and it leaves that little lip of the paint. And it's like, no, come back, right? And that's what you get for your, your trunk. And it's really a cool thing. Some of the times it'll even cast its own little mini shadows just because the paint is sticking so far out onto the canvas. Very cool. Make your own little tree trunk, tree bark by Josh, just like that. Very neat. Don't have to do the whole trunk. Don't have to do the whole thing. Don't have to do every branch. Nothing like that. Now, let's come over. We're going to pop in one more little, maybe two guys over here. Maybe we do two more trees. Maybe, maybe three. Maybe, who knows, maybe 17. I don't know. Let's see how much we can fill it up, right? Now, we'll go chisel up our brush again, running it through the paint, a little bit of pressure so it's nice and flat. Just like we can go out there and start chopping some wood down. We're going to chop these trees down, right? Now, way up back into here, about the same size. And we're going to go straight down that way. We're going to push a little harder, a little harder, 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 harder. Boom! All the way through the bottom. Who cares? Who cares? We're going to have a big old rock down there anyway, holding everything up. So we want to make sure it's dark enough that it stands out in front of everything. So load your brush up again. Every time it interacts with anything, it's going to start to pick up its color and change. So a little bit more paint, putting it down there. More pressure, 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 pressure. Boom! Much thicker than this guy, right? You almost need two brush lengths compared to one. That guy's a little skinnier. This guy's a little thicker, meaning he's going to be a little bit closer to me anyway. Oh, straight down through the bottom. You could put a little, piece of, a little piece of grass down here and call it good. You literally could. Call it good. You literally could. We can come over here and maybe, just maybe, this guy's got a little friend that sits way back there. Very skinny. He's a little guy. Not so much pressure as we go all the way down, right? That way there's differences in between these two. There's a little bit of kind of misty action back in there, providing more distance, more depth. And then we're going to light him up 
a little bit brighter than this guy, which is going to bring him closer towards us. It's going to be very cool. Got to be very cool, guys. Now, we got to go back to our little tiny brush. So let's get rid of that dark fan brush. We don't need that dark fan brush anymore. That's the last that you will be used tonight, sir. Thank you for your fan brushiness and, uh, and hanging out with us while we did this painting, right? Let's see. I don't think we need this fan brush either, so let's clean that guy off. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Tag your favorite sandwich place, like Jimmy John's Spicy Italian or, uh, uh, I don't know, Subway Club or whatever. Tag the place, right? Let them know what we're talking about. Man, you want to talk about any of them. Firehouse Italian, right? Subway, I'd probably go for tuna because for whatever reason, I love their tuna over there. Uh, Jimmy John's, definitely spicy Italian. And uh, Porta Sub, spicy Italian for sure with hot peppers and everything. Gotta get it. Gotta get it. So do you have a crazy, like little mini, you know, small town mom and pop sandwich place that you like going to? What is your favorite sandwich from that place? That's what I want to know. Now we're going to come in. We're gonna get a bunch of our odorless mineral spirits into our pile of dark paint that we just spread out with our fan brush. Just a little bit, maybe 10, 12 little dabs as we drip it off the brush. And now it's gonna to try to run all over the palette. Very wet, very slick, very sloppy pile of paint now. It's got all that stuff in there, right? So we're gonna load it up into our bristles of our brush, come up into here, and it's gonna very easily come off the brush. The more that you have, the more odorless mineral spirits you have in the brush, the more it's going to come off and the easier it's going to come off of the brush and onto the canvas. Very simply and easily. All right? If you don't have enough, guess what? You're going to have trouble getting it to come off of your brush, sliding all across this thick paint. I'm telling you, done it before, done it before, and it's not very fun. And you start to struggle with them branches. It's not the best thing. Now let's come down in here so we can start to pick up a little bit of where our branches are going. Reaching out, right? Heading out that way. Making it thicker over here. A little bit more paint coming out there. A little streak. Maybe he's got a little friend out that side. Who knows? Maybe it takes it and goes, bends off down towards that way. All the details that only the buyer will get to see, right? So if you want to buy this painting and see all those little details, and guess what? Head over to the Etsy store. Make your purchase today. <laughs> Very cool. Coming out of here. A little bit thicker. Another little scraggly branch hanging off the bottom. Maybe we got one guy that comes out there into the mist. Who knows? Right out into here, over there. Maybe a little bit off to that side. A little scraggler over the edge. Who knows what's going on in this old scraggly tree branch, right? Now we'll come back to its other little friend. I don't want to forget his friend. A couple little bits off there. Over here. Maybe we crisscross in front of the tree. Who knows what happens? Very neat. Come across that one. Over here. A little bit. A little bit there. Maybe off to the side. We'll come into here. Go over across there. Very cool. A lot of little details. A lot of little branches in there. Now, we got to come back and sort of light up our kind of brownish color to become a very thin paint, just like that dark color is, right? And then we can go across some of these little guys. Any little bit of brown that comes off of our brush is gonna attach itself onto a bit of tree, right? Just like that. It does little things, little bits on the branches. We don't really need, everybody's not gonna be looking at every single branch, right? If they are, they've got way too much time on their hands to be looking at every branch. All right, come back over here, a couple little bits. We're gonna have a whole bit of trunk off of that guy. Maybe this guy's got a touch. There's a bit over there, sliding up over here. And you can start to see little things start to come alive when we add a little touch of brown to them. But we're not trying to cover over the entire painting, or the entire bit of dark color either, right? That little bit of darkness is our best friend. It's our shadows, it's our depth. All of that you don't want to lose. Let's come up here into this guy. Went off that way. A little bit up here, a little bit over there, a little bit off of that guy in the back. You don't have to see every single thing. It's not going to all be lit up all at the same time anyway. 
which I always have to remind myself of. Now, let's come back. We're gonna grab up the old palette. We're gonna take the brown and the yellow ochre, a little bit more yellow ochre than brown this time. And we're gonna mix them up down here into this bit of a brighter, browner color, right? Just like that. Mix it up right there, scrape it in, and then we'll come back and we'll start to make our little tree trunks. I know I'm gonna have some big old rocks down here in the bottom, so let's not start too low. And just like that, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna slide it over, I'm gonna touch and slide and drag and touch and move and bob and weave like Muhammad Ali tree. Like, right, Muhammad Ali, but for trees. Muhammad Ali tree, no, nobody? Okay, nobody gets me. That's fine. Nobody understands me. That's fine. There we go. Taking this guy just staying on the one little side. Maybe all the way to the top. Can we reach it? Little bits, got branches all the way up there, right? Trying to keep the one side dark so the whole back side of it remains in the darkness. You don't have to brighten up every single thing. Just like that though, got a wicked cool, wicked cool little tree starting to come to life. Now we gotta finish adding in our bit of our, uh, our uh, rocks at the bottom and then we'll be all set, guys. Be really cool. I like this one. I like it for sure. Now, let's come in here. I'm just going to scrape up some more of that of our favorite dark mix. Crimson, black, and blue. In case you're a brand new follower and you don't know. Crimson, black, and blue. Gotta have that crimson, black, and blue color. Because it makes up a wicked awesome shadow. Right? It makes a really deep, dark, almost black. It's a very deep, dark purple. It does look black to me. I always refer to it as black, even though it's not. So... Do as I say, not as I do, right? <laughs> or do as I do, not as I say, whatever the opposite of the thing is. Now we're gonna come in here like this. Let's go over this guy, just making all these crazy little bits to get out, right? As long as we have that darkness that we're just mushing on, just so it stays extra dark, covers up all that color. Right? Maybe we come up here to where that little trunk of our little tree is. Dang, pop that guy in like that. All these little bits. And then with all that paint on the canvas, it would really want to grow far, so we're not going to try to pull it too far. And all of a sudden, we've blocked off the corner, finished off the edge of the painting, and then we can come back in here and with that same tree color, that kind of brighter color, throw some little highlights on this guy, right? Maybe down that way, maybe over here, maybe over there, maybe back, maybe pull it the other direction, slide it down this way a little bit as it darkens and gets darker and darker and darker back here into the corner, right? All up to us what we want to do. I'm telling you. It doesn't make a difference. You can do whatever you want to do, and it's going to be awesome. And who's going to say, oh, this is supposed to be over there, and that's not supposed to be like that, and you shouldn't have done it like this, and you should have blah, blah, blah. Just tell them to go go talk to paint with Josh, okay? Be like, look, go talk to paint with Josh. All right, I don't have time for you. I have time for your nonsense. Send them to me, and I'll set them straight for you, all right? Just like that, guys. That's a wicked cool little painting, if you ask me. If you ask me. Awesome. Okay, let's put the old family in, and then we'll get ready to get off the air, as we say. As we say in the uh, entertainment industry, we're going to get off the air here soon. <laughs> like Walter Cronkite. <laughs> Paint with Josh. Something. It doesn't work. There's too many, there's too many syllables. It's a, it's, a, it's a miscommunication of syllables. So, start coming up with a name for this painting, guys. What would you want to name this piece? As we come in here... Let's take the old fam family and we'll put them way out there. Bing, bang, boom. Flying through the scene. Wicked. Okay. Let's see. It's a very dark little scene we got today. And we're going to go back and add our splashy bits and stuff too, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. But start coming up with a name for the painting. What do you want to name this one? And if you got the best name for it, I might just say, you know, X the whole thing and we'll name it whatever you gotta name it. Dang. Wicked. I like that. I like it, guys. I like it. This one's much straighter anyway. Somebody came on my Facebook and they're like, why are your paintings at like an angle? I'm like, well, sometimes it's because of how I'm standing over here and like trying not to be in the way of the camera and doing that. It just gives them more character. I dare you. I dare you, sir. That's pretty cool. All right, let's finish washing these brushes off. You guys tell me where you're, uh, what you got for a name for this painting. And we'll go into our last little bits of our highlighty, splashy area. All right, a couple little things, a couple little bits. 
going with less pressure, much less pressure, right? These guys stay a bit brighter out here, much less pressure. Because it's, it's a little bit thicker paint. You don't have so much on there. Bang, right there, right? Now, the funnest part is when we take our little teeny tiny fan brush. Oh, no, that's it. I guess the painting's over. Show's over, guys. Sorry, we can't go any further. Oh, no. No, I'm just messing with you. We're going to take a little bit of our liquid white. That's just my timer to keep me on from going from, you know, two hours. If I go for two hours, sometimes I can get on a roll talking, right? So we'll get a little bit of our liquid white onto the edge of the palette, way out here, get a little of our titanium white onto the brush. And that way, it's gonna flick off right down here, right? So come into here, we'll start doing our little flicks. Bing, bang, boom. Got a few little splashies that would just take you 10 million years to paint all those all on your own, right? But now we get those few little bits of water that are splashing out, reaching out towards us into the scene. Really cool, love this one. Man, came out fantastic. So start hitting me with the names, guys. What do you wanna call this one? And maybe if your name is just so cool, I might just choose it. I like to leave it, if we don't have a buyer, I like to leave the name blank so the buyers can choose the name when they buy it. But sometimes you guys just have the most awesome name that I just have to, I just gotta name it that. So let me clean up the palette and you guys start coming up with the names. I'll scrape everything up. Oh, that's a big old pile of dark that we didn't use. I might save that for tomorrow just because it's so much paint. And I'd hate to get rid of it all. All right, we made up that whole dark color. I'd hate to get rid of it all. As I throw bits of paint onto my floor. Always good. All right, we're going to save this bit of dark mix right in front of there for the next painting. Not to say that I'm going live again tonight. I'm just saying for the next time that we paint. For the next time. It usually inspires me to go live again tonight if the painting that we paint sells. I, you know, I get it. I totally get it. I get it. It's not like that. Let's see. Come over here. Wipe this up. Tell me the name, guys. What are we going to name this thing? I need help. I've named 875 paintings. I need your help to name some. You got to help me out. All my names start ending up the same name after a while. It's like, oh, Sunset Mountain this. Sunset Waterfall version 27, right? You guys got to help me out. What's special about this one? What stands out? Maybe it's the face in the rock? Does that have something to do with your title? Right? Is it that face? Is it, you know, what stands out as part of the title? It doesn't have to be Sunset Waterfall this, you know what I mean? It could just be one word like desolation or solitude or whatever. You guys are the poets, not me. You're the poets. You guys always come up with the best titles. So now that we're all done, we can come back here and read some titles out. Let's see. Crimson Falls. Rainbow Read. What was that? Uh, Danny Johnson says Mystic. Blue Lagoon I saw. Day, let's see. Flower says Serenity. Hidden Paradise. Erica says Amber Falls. Mountain of Faces. I like that. The Resilient Tree, I dig that one too, because he's like, screw it, I'm not gonna be taken down by this water. This is like a flood right here coming down through this thing. Doesn't happen like this all the time. Widow's Pass, oh, I dig that. Dig that, My Dream Falls, Soldier Falls, Guardian of the Sky, I like that one too. Or London's Light, I dig that. Uh, Darkness Falls or Dark Paradise, Airy Fairy Faces, Gremlin's Grotto. Uh, the Last Falls, we got Peak. Let's see. So do I ever paint detailed leaves on the trees? Sometimes we do. But in the in this scene, I've done about nine of these and uh, I like it nice and bare. It's like a, it's a, it's a flooded, dry desert scene that doesn't normally see water. Soldiers Falls, I dig that from Ashley. Looks like she's a super squad member. Biorhythms, Life Rock, Rocky River, Voyage. Oh, Voyage, I dig that. Last Standing. Cotton Candy Skies, that's kind of cool. Mystic Falls, Serendipity, I dig it. I dig it, Falcon, I like that. Daymend Lake, Waters of Starkness. Let's see, I like the last one standing. I kind of like that, I kind of like it. I use oil paints for whoever's asking. I also like that one word title, it's like Voyager, 
uh, or the Voyage. I think it was Voyage. Crimson Falls says Alexia. Mystery Falls. Pick it. I know. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I got to go back and try to find the person that said it is the thing. I'm trying to find the person that said it initially. It was like that one word I was looking for. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. All right. So it was Voyage. The first time I saw it was Tricks for the Kids. So Tricks for the Kids said Voyage. Everyone's going to go follow them. We're going to pin that comment. There it is. There we go. Now, now it's been chosen. All right, we can flip this guy around and sign it. Let's go over here like this. So remember, if you purchase this painting, you get this actual painting. It's not a poster, it's not a canvas print. It's this actual canvas that gets shipped to your house in professionally packaged custom packaging. Let's see. This one is number 878. Can't believe I painted that many paintings. That is a lot of paintings. Voyage. Remember guys, we have big, Big, big news coming up. So keep your eye on my Facebook uh, for the, the announcement. Very big news coming up probably tomorrow, maybe the next day. So keep an eye on my Facebook. And if you're trying to figure out, well, how do I get to your Facebook so I could follow you, Josh? Well, go to paintwithjosh.com and it's got every link that you need. My supplies, my schedule, my Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, everything. Everything, my, my Amazon store, everything's over there. So. Go to paintwithjosh.com, find it, like it, go over to the Etsy store and uh, purchase, your fa purchase your favorite painting, your t-shirt, hat, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want. I'm going to get a little bit of color onto the brush. As we all know, for every easel, doesn't matter which one it is, every single one has this issue where you can't reach the top of the painting, right? So I'm going to go back and do it afterwards. A little bit of liquid white, a little bit of our crimson, it's going to mix in. That black, get the uh, darker mix over here, drag that back towards the center, darker mix from over here, drag that in towards the center. Try not to drop the painting. And all of a sudden we got a wicked cool finished top. Oh, there we go. See that? Gorgeous little finished top to it. So, bingo, bango. Remember guys, if you want to get this one, go to paintwithjosh.com, find the Etsy list, uh, the Etsy store, it's the very first thing you come to. Go over to Etsy, search for number 878, if you want to get this one. So, unfortunately, if it doesn't sell during the show, I cannot give away the frame for free. I'm trying to give away the free frame, free frame option on this guy, if it's purchased during the show. But if not, I totally understand. I get it. I get it. But I can't give it away the frame unless it's bought during the show. So says the manager. So, incentive to buy now. Otherwise, i to pay extra for that frame. Now we're gonna take the gloves off so we don't get any further paint onto the frame. Put this sucker back up here. Gorgeous, look at that black. Ah, I knew it would look the best with the black frame. I absolutely, 100% knew it. Just like that. Gorgeous, guys. Okay, let me spin you guys around. Get this frame going, let's see. There we go, flip the camera, go over here. All right, guys, pretty wicked if you ask me. The frame makes it look really nice, just really nice. Let's see, beautiful work again, thank you, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, no screenshots. Are you screenshotting it for your, uh, your background on your phone? That's cheating, that's cheating. Go over to my Facebook, I got better photos over there you can screenshot. So we, uh, we also sell uh, posters and all sorts of stuff. Uh, available in the Etsy store. I love you guys, and uh, I'm gonna get out of here. Let's see, do I ever paint mermaids? No, I don't paint people or animals. I think this one's 275 with the free frame upgrade, uh, or 273, something like that, something crazy like that. But remember, go over to paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Uh, it's two, like I said, 273 and some change, comes with the free frame during the show only. Otherwise, I've gotta jack the frames up a little bit more as an incentive to get you to buy, to buy now, right? Look at my shirt too. My three pieces of painting shirt, it's got paint all over it. And on the back. <laughs> Let's see. Faces in time. Thank you for the roses. I love you. Appreciate you. You wicked falls. I know I say wicked a lot. I'm not even from Boston. I'm not even from Boston. I say wicked all the time. <laughs> I don't know why. I gotta get a haircut so bad. Just 
Yeah. Oh yeah. That looks better. It's better when we do it like that. My goodness. So it's, this is how hot it is in here. Woo. Right on guys. Well, uh, let's see. Can you, I can definitely do you a painting. I have a custom listing available in my Etsy store. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com and search for the custom painting link. And it'll be a little bit smaller than this painting. Uh, if you want a bigger painting than that, send me a message over on my Etsy store and we'll discuss a price and I'll send you a, uh, send you a quote. What are you asking about shipping? Let's see. I definitely do customs all the time. Black and white cows. That'd be cool. That would be cool. So, uh, when do I do the shipping? So after about three days, because I live out here in Las Vegas, it's so hot and so dry out here that the oil paints dry almost as fast as acrylics do for goodness sake. So it all depends on your, uh, your climate though. If you live in a very wet place like Florida or Mississippi, it's going to take a longer time for the paint to dry than it is for me living out here in Las Vegas. That's the trade-off. I get the paintings dry faster, but I also cook to death in the heat. <laughs> so the, uh, but yeah, thank you, Linz. Love you. And, um, uh, yeah, this one turned out fantastic. And, uh, you know, if you want it, head over to the Etsy store and get it. Oh, yours for, uh, oh, I got you. Uh, today I dropped it at the place today. Yeah. Yeah. It says Gerg. I thought it was Greg. Gerg. Oh, I might've just read it wrong, but, um, yeah, I dropped it at uh, the UPS store today, printed the label off this morning. The mailman never came to work. So of course, <laughs> so I brought the paintings there for no reason. Took them and I dropped them at uh, yours. And there was one other person. Oh, I can't remember the name now. I don't think about their real name anyway, but dropped both of those paintings off. And then we got one for Tim that's drying downstairs. And uh, the other ones I took down to my other, my part-time job where I'd like to show them off and let the people look at them for a couple days before they have to ship out. But yeah, it's very cool. Of course, appreciate you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Tricks for the kids. I'm glad you were able to, uh, you were able to get a pin. Hope you got a few follows for uh, naming the painting. And uh, thank you. I loved your name. It was fantastic. Let's see. How do you know how to do this? How do I know how to paint? I watched a lot of Bob Ross videos and I kind of taught myself everything that he wasn't saying out loud, right? He would do stuff, but he wouldn't say it out loud either because he didn't have time or he didn't want to sound like he was on crack like me. And I just talk all the time because I don't want any, any part to be uh, empty airspace, right? But he either didn't say it or couldn't say it because he did, was on a time restraint. And so I tried to figure out what he couldn't say that he was doing. And then once I figured out those tricks, I decided to tell him to everyone else. So yes, I painted this one right here today. It's kind of hard to see all the, the lights. It's much, there we go. It's much brighter up close but with these lights. See that? Like if we push it back here, all this looks very dark when it's actually very bright as you come up closer to it. So don't want to make you guys barf <laughs> with the, all the movement back and forth. My lights, I, I don't know. It's the same light. I never turn it off. So for some reason, it seems brighter some days than it is other days. <laughs> Unless my daughter's coming in here and twisting the knob when I'm not in here. It always stays on. So it should always be the same. It's always in the same spot. I don't know why. But let's see. You always miss the beginning. Well, this one's over. You missed the whole smash. The whole smash. Look at that. Very cool. <laughs> So, well, I love you guys. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. I floor you with every painting. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I was married to a British person, so I understand the term floor you. I got that. You floor me. Understand completely. So, uh, thank you guys for tuning in and for being here. Uh, it took me about, what, an hour, guys? An hour and 15 minutes, maybe? We've been, what? We, yeah, about an hour and 15 minutes. We started at 8 o'clock, and now it's 9.15. So, um, yes, it is a contrail. <laughs> It's a contrail and it represents my uh, late mother-in-law who was taken from us too soon. And uh, every time I do a sky that I really love, I like to add the contrail in there. It's Her name was Karen. Uh, I don't think anyone's ever going to forget her name because Karen's became, the Karen's became such a big thing after she passed away. And I'm, I, you know, not that I'm glad that she passed away, but I'm glad that she went before the Karen's became a big deal because, hey, Melanie, what's happened? Because she would have lost it. She was not a Karen like that. She was... She would never, never complain about a meal. If something was wrong, she'd be like, no, I don't, I don't want to cause a fuss. I don't, you know, she was not the kind of, the kind of Karen that everybody talks about. But yeah, every time we do a very cool sky, I like to add Karen in the sky for it. So make me cry, guys. All right. Well, I love you guys. Like I said, uh, I'll leave this one up uh, in the store with the frame option for free. Um, 
for 10 or 15 minutes after we end the show and then I got to take it down. So uh, if you want to get it with the frame, get it now or within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Otherwise, you're going to have to pay extra for the frame by the time that you do get it. So I love you guys. Take care. Super good at uh, this, at this, at being live and painting and stuff. I appreciate that. Thank you. I appreciate it. This one's number 878 on my career. Wow. 878. Dang, that's a lot of paintings, right? That's a lot of paintings. What's up, Anna? So number 878. I think I even says it in the title of this stream. Uh, something like Sunset Waterfall, you know, painting 878, something like that. Mm. Wicked. Remember, guys, anybody watching from Las Vegas, we have a workshop coming up uh, on the 12th of August. So it's coming up soon. I've already sold a few tickets. So if you want to get over there and come paint with Josh live, I'm going to supply all the tools, all the canvases, all the paints, everything you're going to need. And uh, even for you out-of-towners, right, that want to fly in to take the class, we'll ship your painting back to you for like 40 extra bucks. That's all it's going to take to ship the painting back to you. So come take the class. It's $75 for two-hour class, and uh, it's going to be fantastic. You'll earn a, learn, earn, learn a whole lot about painting waves on a black canvas. It's going to be really cool. Yes, it's very hot in Vegas. Very, very, very hot. Like 111. No, when I got in the car, when I was leaving work today, I got in the car, it said 118. And by the time I started driving, it dropped to 111. And, um, yeah, it doesn't get any cooler at night. Just because the sun goes down doesn't mean it, that it gets cool. It just stays hot, and the street radiates up all the heat. It's horrible. I don't know why anyone lives here, including me. <laughs> so, all right, I love you guys. I'm going to uh, get out of here. And uh, until I see you guys again next time, won't be tomorrow. You want to know why? What happens on Wednesdays, guys? What happens for anybody who's, who's watching, who's a follower, a diehard follower, why doesn't Josh go live on Wednesday? Why? Does anybody know? Good night, Linz. Does anybody know? I can't. It's like a, it's like a hair. It's sticking on my hat. New tutorial on YouTube, says Airy Fairy Faye. Wanda says you're off. Yes, that's true, because Cosmic Lighthouse said there's a new tutorial that comes out on YouTube. Melanie says video editing, which I do every day, <laughs> including Wednesday. I do get a lot of video editing done on Wednesdays because I don't go live, and it's because all my uh, my brand new YouTube tutorial comes out, and uh, four <laughs> Pennsylvania gets four seasons in one day. So, uh, do I have a pet? I have, depends. I have uh, three dogs. And then London um, has two ferrets and two cats that we, you know, when we were together, we had all those. And I still go over and take care of them every so often. Uh, so yeah, we had seven animals when we were together. Now I've got three. And uh, let's see, needs a day off to post YouTube videos. No, that's tomorrow is when the YouTube video comes out. So about a week and a half ago, I did a very cold winter scene on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. And I think Tim purchased that one. Um, I think, he, no, maybe. Can't remember. Maybe, no, maybe it was Gerg or Greg. And whoever's it was, we did that one, and I filmed that as a tutorial for YouTube. So it gets all zoomed in. Every time we come up to the to touch it, the camera zooms in so you can see everything up close. And um, those videos always come out on Wednesdays. And then what I've been doing is releasing a new video every single day this week um, as one of my TikTok lives. So like one of this one of these streams that you've seen over the last month will be available for free every day this week. I'm, I'm releasing a new one, and probably into next week too. So I have like so many of these streams over in my Super Squad YouTube section that um, nobody watches because there's only like 60 YouTube Super Squad members and I've got all this content. I'm like, well, if you guys want to see some of these, these it's kind of like a little tempt. Like if you want to see more of these, watch this one. If you like it, come join the Super Squad. Pull you in. Don't touch the canvas over here. So, uh, but yeah, the Super Squad on YouTube, $7.99. So if you can't buy a painting, and you can't get a poster and you got no wall space, but you still want to support me somehow, go over to YouTube, uh, type in youtube.com slash paintwithjosh slash join, right? And if you join my channel for $7.99, it basically gives you a key and you unlock the door to all of the TikTok streams and everything that gets downloaded from here and uploaded over there. So, um, like I said, don't want to be up here all night. I got to get out of here. I'm starving. You guys want to know why? You want to know why I'm so hungry? Guess. You can just take a guess. You'll never guess. Maybe one person, because I text one person, they might know. Take a guess why I haven't eaten yet as of tonight. Not because I have no money. <laughs> this is a given. <laughs> Not because of that. Why haven't I eaten yet tonight? Just guess. Because it's a funny story. And I'll just tell you before I leave. It's just a funny little story. 
Just funny. Let's see who knows or who can guess. Busy? No, that's not it. That's not it. I was fully prepared to eat, but I could not eat. Why couldn't I eat? I even went to the place and I got in the drive through line and I ordered my food. And I sit there making sure that this listing would be available to, uh, to you know, buy for you guys. So it'd be available during the live show. So I'm like this. Like, yeah, bop, 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 get my order in. I'm like, okay, the guy's pulling away. It's my turn to come up to the line. You guys already know. Look at the comments. Look at the comments. I saved an animal. That would have been funny. Napping? No, I did. I did nap, but no. Yeah, forgot my wallet. I looked down to get my wallet. And because I was so concerned about making sure that this listing was going to be in the store, apparently I didn't grab my wallet. And so then you get to that point where like, okay, I'm far enough back from the window where the guy can't see me yet, right? The guy that works there, I did to add to Apple Pay. I don't, it would have, it would have taken longer. And I'm so about like, holding up the people behind me like I'm that person to like get out of the way so I like I go okay the, the the car's driven off I now realize I don't have my wallet but I haven't pulled up to the window yet I'm still back right so this is the question this is the dilemma what would you guys do do you just cover your face and just drive straight through and just leave right or do you pull up to the window and go, oh my God, I forgot. I don't have my wallet. I'm so sorry. Like, what do you, what do, you do? Because you guys tell you, tell me what you would do. And I'll tell you what I did. You tell me what you would do. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I did. I'm sitting there in Taco Bell. He's like 1601. I'm like, all day, baby, all day. <laughs> book it. Linz goes, I'd book it, right? Just drive away, right? What would you do? Would you just, would you just like, just go, oh my God, and just not even look at the window and just drive straight past it and be like, oh, there's something in my back seat I was missing over here, right? So I went up to the window and I was like, dude, I just realized I forgot my wallet. I'm so sorry. That's all I could say. And I, then I just drove off. I was like, there's nothing else to say. I, what, what am I expecting him to be like? It's okay. Take the food for free, right? Which he honestly could have done because they're just going to throw it away anyway, right? They're not going to give it to somebody else. Uh, no, see, hold my bag and I'll be back. No, the embarrassment. I'm paint with Josh, okay? I've got a million followers. I can't go back to the restaurant and be like, I'm the guy. Remember me that forgot his wallet and sat in like 10 minutes of waiting before even realizing that I forgot. You can't go back. No way. No way am I going back. That's so embarrassing. I don't think I can ever go back to that restaurant ever again, just in case that one 18-year-old kid that works there is working there, because then he's going to laugh at me and be like, oh, yeah, you were the guy. No, I remember. Yeah, we laughed about you after you left for like hours, right? That's my, that's my worst nightmare. It's literally my worst nightmare. So I was like, well, I either wait for him to finish his shift, or it might have to be a DoorDash kind of night, because... Uh, I'm pretty hungry and um, I don't want to go back there and show my face. <laughs> I didn't have Apple Pay, right? I, it would have taken longer for me to load my Apple Pay. I don't know my card number. I would have needed my wallet to load my Apple Pay. You know what I mean? Like it's just a, it's a mess. And so I was just like, do I, do I just, do I just go like this and drive past the window? <laughs> or do I just you know, pull up and be like, look, dude, I'm really sorry. Really, I really wanted this food bad. I really did. I was super hungry. And I told myself, it's okay. If the painting sells, then I'll go buy dinner. If it doesn't sell, then I'll be so sad that I won't want to eat anyway. So it's fine. It's fine. And now apparently this one hasn't sold. So we're not eating tonight. <laughs> no, it's not like that. Uh, I might just have to go. Um, <laughs> I might have to set up my Apple Pay in preparation for this happening at some point in the future again. So we got to feed Josh. I know, right? I know it's the end of the month for everybody, including me. I got lots of bills to pay too. So, uh, but yeah, I love you guys. And, um, yeah, I love you. I can't wait to come back and do it. Not tomorrow, but on Thursday at 8 PM. Then we got Friday night freestyle, which is right here on TikTok, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Then we go Saturday and Sunday, just on TikTok, And then we go Monday night madness on all three again. And then poof, it's Tuesday again. And we're right back here. So, Hey, what's up, Chris? How's it going, buddy? How's it going? So I painted one I thought Melanie would really like, but 
And she doesn't like my artwork anymore, guys. No, she doesn't buy my stuff anymore. It's because she doesn't have any wall space. She has like 57 Paint With Josh paintings. There's no room left in her house for Paint With Josh painting. That's fine. Like, we still love you, Melanie. We still love you. Oh, stop it. Oh, stop it. Oh, man. Okay. Well, like I said, this is what always happens. I end up sitting up here for way too long, chit-chatting, because I love you guys so much. Hi, Lisa. Don't worry. It's all right. If you, uh, I was just telling everybody about the YouTube Super Squad. If you go over and join on YouTube, and you have to click the join button, not the subscribe. The subscribe is for free on YouTube. Join is when you pay for it. And when you pay for YouTube, it's $7.99 for one month. And uh, there's more than eight, uh, 180 videos. All the live streams, you can go back and rewatch 100 times. And then the month comes up again, and you decide, do I want to keep being part of the super squad? Or do you want to just try it for a month? I always suggest, hey, just try it for a month. You get all the class videos, right? The deep instructional modules, the landscape modules, and the seascape modules. More than 12, which is like, I think there's like 18 hours of like no messing around Josh. Like not... God, that scared the crap out of me. That, that little hair, you see it? It scared the crap out of me. <laughs> thought it was like a bug on the back of my neck or something. I was like, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. And I was like, squish it in case it's alive. And you're like, this, ah, I got you. <laughs> but it was just a hair, so it's okay. But yeah, so I suggest everybody try it for a month. It's $7.99, right? You get 180 videos. I don't even know what the breakdown is of that. Like three cents per video? Um, all full-length TikTok streams, all the streams that I've ever downloaded are up in the YouTube Super Squad, all the class modules, how to paint, like different videos that you've never seen before uh, because they're hidden. They're behind the paywall, right? So tons and tons and tons of content. And I suggest try it out. You got to, It's awesome that you paint. That's wicked, Kendra. Um, but yeah, like I said, I try it out for, for a month. It's $7.99. And uh, like I said, it's probably two, maybe two and a half cents uh, per video for $7.99 for all you get over there. And uh, you get to see all the live streams so you could rewatch the whole thing from the start to the finish. It's, it's awesome. So uh, besides that, I love you guys. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, YouTube pays. YouTube is the best monetization platform, but it's also the hardest platform to grow on. And it's the hardest platform to get views on because there's so much competition on YouTube. There's so much to watch that it's almost impossible to grow unless you go viral, right? You have to go viral in order to make any amount of money on YouTube that's worth it. You've got to go viral. So luckily I did. <laughs> and uh, now we're making what I consider acceptable money for YouTube as far as like the four years that I've been doing it. And barely, I think you have to cover a hundred dollars before they even pay you out. And there would be in the first few months, once I finally got, I think you have to get to like, so you have to get to, I think it's a thousand subscribers, but you have to have 4,000 watch hours, right? 4,000 watch hours. Doesn't that sound like a lot? Does that sound like a lot? 4,000 hours watched. Just let me know, just yes or no, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with a stat. I'm going to hit you with a stat for my YouTube today versus when I very first started, right? You had to get 4,000 watch hours in order to be able to start making money from your content. So does that sound like a lot of time? 4,000? Like how many, how much time do you spend, you know, 40 hours a week? So what's that? 10 weeks. So it's 100 weeks of work. It's 4,000 hours, right? 100 weeks of work, if I'm doing the math correctly. 4,000 hours. That's a long time, right? Do you guys want to know what, how many watch hours I've had in the past month on YouTube? And I'll even pull up my phone and show you. <laughs> you want to know? How many watch hours? It's an insane amount. Just guess. You guys, this is a good, this is a good contest. I'm going to give you guys one straight minute to guess at the insane, the incredible. If you think 4,000 is a lot, <laughs> the incredible amount of numbers, not a million, a million hours. Jesus Christ. That would be a lot. That'd be a lot of hours, a million hours, right? No, not a million. It's less than that. 20,000. That's close. 100K, a little bit lower, a little bit lower. 153,000, a little bit lower. That's a lot of hours, guys. Jeez, you're making me sound like I suck now. Like I should have way more. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Like, now I'm feeling like crap. Anna's the only one that gets it. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. All you guys are like, 100 million hours. What? You know how long that is? Jeez. It's making me feel like death now. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> now, here we go. I'm going to show you guys right here. And I did the math. It's over 
one four million minutes, right? So if you do the amount of hours, ooh, oh, that's very close. Sally Spillman has got to be the closest so far. Sally, you're like almost right on the money. Almost. Goodness gracious. Okay, here we go. You guys ready to see it? Let's see if I can show you. Yes, all right, without having to show you my monetary income. Look at this crazy number, right? That's 70,200 hours of watched content in the last 28 days. Uh, if I never, if I didn't have anxiety before, right? So let's do the math. Let's go 70,200 freaking hours, right? Just, just wait, 70,000. Oh, I messed it up already. 70,200, and I know there's an exact number. We'll just put 70,200 times, right? 60 minutes in an hour, okay? There's 60 minutes in an hour, right? Oh my God. Boom! Oh, 4.212 million minutes watched. You know how many minutes there are in a month, right? How many minutes are in a month? Let's just see that. Let's go 60 minutes, right? 60 minutes in an hour times 24 hours in a day is 1,400 times, let's just say 30 on average in a month, brings you to 43,000 minutes in a month. 4.212 million minutes. Heh, that means someone's watching me like, or, you know, a thousand people are watching me every second of every day. like all the time. It's such like a, it's like a, oh my God, I, no wonder I don't have any fingernails anymore. And I sit up here and I just stare at a blank canvas and go, oh my God, please come up with an idea. Please come up with an idea. All this anxiety, because there's someone watching literally every second times a thousand of, of you know, it's incredible, times 10,000. God, that's so many people. That's so many minutes watched. It's insane. No, I have not revealed my big secret yet. We can't really talk about it yet. We, um, we're in the midst of finalizing the deal, um, so we can't really speak about it yet, but it's coming quick. So probably by, what's today, Tuesday, probably by Thursday or Friday on my Facebook page, we'll probably be able to talk about it. So can't wait to see you on TV someday. I believe it will happen. I hope it happens eventually one day. <sighs> I think I got anxiety now about, you know, a million people, what about 40 million. <laughs> Oh man, it's crazy. Crazy uh, introduced me to painting and I'm so amazed at what I can do. That's awesome. I love you, Bobby. That's very cool. That's very cool. Go go put that on one of my, go, go review me somewhere on Facebook or, or somewhere. Be like, oh my God, I can't believe Josh is so freaking awesome that me, a non-artist, was able to paint that. You know what I mean? Like, that'd be great. I would love, I would love that. That's so cool. It re really makes me smile a lot when I get to, uh, Messages like that, when I get, yeah, I'm meditating, I feel you. Uh, when I get comments like that, like, oh my God, the reason I started is because of you. You make it look so easy, this, that, and the other. It's just like, it just makes me smile. It just makes me smile. So, let's see. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, so, like I said, I always hang out here for way too long after the painting's over. And, um, you know, it just ends up being more for me to edit. So, I love you guys. Uh, you really, uh, there are people that can do it with acrylics and have it look exactly the same. I don't know how to do it with acrylics. I only teach oils. So, uh, if you ask, can I make acrylics look like that? No, I cannot. I don't know how to make acrylics look like that, uh, or how to act like that. Um, cause I only teach oils. So, um, you definitely can paint clouds like me. It's not hard. I show you in every single video. Everyone show you, you can do it. Paint. Pressure, practice, that's all you gotta do. Practice, 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 right? So, uh, you mean, hey, Fuzz, what's happening, bro? Welcome back. Welcome back. Have a good night with Dan Mintz. See you later, thank you, thank you. So, uh, no, see, I started with oils. Uh, I never really dabbled in acrylics, except for my very, very, very first one, which actually is sitting right over here. This was the very, very, very first acrylic painting I ever did. And I painted a canvas. See, I mean, it looked like a canvas. It was very cool, very detailed, very detailed. All the little, all the little spots. You know what I mean? I painted all, no, I'm just kidding. This was my very first acrylic landscape painting. 
And uh, it didn't come out too bad, but I knew, like, you know, the clouds, not at all the same, right? Did it the same way, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing then. And I still, if I tried to paint an acrylic scene now, it looked just like this, right? So this, compared to that, right? Four years later, of course, lots of practice, lots and lots and lots of practice, right? But it's not a bad painting for my very first one. You can definitely see the trees I would have. But even then, I was leaving lots and lots and lots of dark separators, so I knew, at least subconsciously, about that dark separator. Chuck that sucker. I don't care about that painting. <laughs> Throw that sucker over there. So, like I said, love you guys. Uh, I'll leave this thing up for about... Yeah, this one's absolutely for sale. Um, and it's... I've been spouting the whole time. If you buy it during the show, which is about to end, you get a free black frame upgrade. Or I've got the the gray one too, but I think the black one is a better fit. You know what I mean? The gray wood just wouldn't really, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, it's a it's personal preference, of course, but I think the black one um, would go the best. Oh, the first painting I ever did? No, definitely not. That's definitely not for sale. Not that uh, little acrylic painting, no. No, no, no. See, and if you really want to talk about it, this is what I consider my first painting, right? When I say my first painting, right, how I paint now, this was the very first one. It's actually number one. And I didn't do that. I didn't do that for when I very first started. So don't, don't be, don't, don't think that I was so pompous that I just knew I was going to be painting with Josh. And I put number one on my very first canvas, right? No, I didn't even sign the back. I had to do this three weeks ago, <laughs> just recently did it. Uh, but yeah, this is what I consider my very first painting. Um, it's the very first time I got the Bob Ross products. The very first time I had the liquid white and the brushes and all the stuff for reels, right? It was the real, and this is what it was going to be, right? And if I, if I, if it came out good, I was going to keep doing it. And if I, if it came out crappy, then I knew my, my wife at the time would never let me hear the end of it for spending $250 on a, on a uh, hobby that I was not going to continue it. Right. So you guys want to see it? It actually didn't come out too bad. You can see it's a little, little cold blue scene, a little cold blue guy back here. So when I very first started, I was very much afraid of all of these colors, right? And I didn't want to start with all of the colors of the rainbow because, oh, the yellow and the blue and the, and they may mix and oh my God, it might be bad. And I don't know. I don't want to. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do just blue, black, and white. How can you mess that up? I can't mess up with just three colors. It's got to be easy with just three colors, right? Let's see. Oh, that's cool. Your pick is my is my painting. Look at that. His picture, his profile picture, Jeff right there. That's my seascape painting from 4th of July. That's wicked. Can I tell which one it is just by looking at it? That's the version four. Yeah, that's the biggest one. That's the version four, I think. Maybe. <laughs> I think it's version four. Yes, see? Okay, cool, I'm, I'm good. I know my own stuff, right? So uh, when I very first started again, I was very much afraid of all the colors and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna go with the blue, black, and white and we'll see what it looks like. Boom, and that's what we came up with for my very, 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 very first go. That's what it ended up looking like. And I was like, man, oh man, this is fun. And who never told me it was this easy, right? I thought this was easy because this was my very first time. And I was like, wow. Man, Bob wasn't kidding. Anyone can do it, obviously, right? Cut to my second painting. Even better than this one, right? Mountain came out better. Sky was better. Class. Trees were slightly better. They, they're crap compared to how I do it now, but so much better. And I was like, man, this painting is... This is not the easiest thing I've ever done, right? Third painting comes up. Holy crap, it's like I forgot everything I ever learned. And it, I literally took the painting off the easel when I was done, straight into the garage, threw it into the big dumpster in the garage. I was like, oh my God, right? And then it was like every painting after that, I got a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. But it was, it was, uh, it was a funny thing because I was like, man, this painting thing's easy. I would do my third one. And I was like, what is wrong with this? I don't know what's going on. So never, uh, never get too confident with your skills because uh, karma will come along and show you reality real fast, right? Hey, Luna, thanks for becoming part of the team, baby. So remember, get your Paint With Josh three P's of painting shirt. You can get Paint With Josh hats. You can get all sorts of stuff over my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. I've loved hanging out with you guys. 
I love being here and talking with you and chilling. I especially love when paintings sell. So get over to my Etsy store and uh, get a hold of this one before someone else does. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bye.